I'm going to start a discussion now about sampling the state of that capacitor two or more times in a row. And this is a topic that can be a little confusing, uh, so I'm going to keep my discussion a little bit more intuitive um, uh, and play a little loose with definitions, uh, but hopefully this approach will help uh, the understanding of what I'm trying to say. Now this voltage here this is the voltage that, uh, from this situation, but let's redraw what I'm, what I'm trying to talk about here. So we had a reset capacitor, uh, V1, which is equal to 5 volts, let's say. There is a resistor, R, a capacitor, C. There's a switch that's open. We're sampling that capacitor through an amplifier, which is a non-ideal amplifier, and then reading that to an ideal ADC. So we're talking about the noise and what goes on with respect to this guy. Now, let's say we sampled this state of the capacitor twice. So sample one and sample two. And sample one may have happened here, sample one and sample two may have happened there, for instance. So at each point, there's going to be a slightly different flicker noise component and a slightly different thermal noise component to the final um, sample. Let's write out what we would see in terms of noise. I'm not talking about voltage now. I'm just talking about noise. I'm going to scroll down. So oh, too far. Sample 1. Let's say sample 1, what we would see well, what we would see is the noise squared total for sample 1, where the square root of this is the noise. So this is the variance. The noise squared is the variance. Equals the noise squared from KTC noise plus the noise squared from the amplifier thermal noise, the white noise, plus the noise squared from the amplifier from flicker noise. And this is just what I said before. Here's the flicker noise component, here's the thermal noise component of the amplifier, and this is the reset noise on that that uh, 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 capacitor. And let's say in sample two we have the parallel formalism where it would be N KTC squared plus N amp two thermal squared plus N amp two flicker squared. Since they're sampled at slightly different points in time, these two components will be slightly different and these two components will be slightly different. Since there's some state, thermodynamic state, locked in on that capacitor, these two are the same. Well, what do we get if we take the noise from each one and subtract it from the other? So no, let's say noise total 1 squared minus noise total 2 squared equals, I'm just going to write it out uh, even though it's a little cumbersome, NKTC, KTC squared minus NKTC, ah, sorry, squared uh, plus N amp therm, just one squared minus N amp therm, two squared plus I'll write it down here, plus N amp flicker 1 squared minus N amp flicker 2 squared. Now, this value is different from this value, so this is going to be a non-zero quantity. This value is different from this value, so this will be a non-zero quantity, but this value is exactly equal to this value, so that's zero. And now I'm going to get a little hand wavy because since this uh, 
thermal noise component is uncorrelated with this thermal noise component by subtracting one from the other, we've actually doubled the noise power. And that's exactly what's happened there too. So this is going to be equal to zero plus in amp thermal squared, twice that. No, notice now there's not a designation for it being from sample one or sample two, plus two times in amp flicker squared. What does this mean? Well, it means that for the thermal noise component, for one sample, the signal may have zigged, while for the other one, it zagged. And for th flicker noise, it's, it's the same thing. But in reality, this is a correlated double sampling that we've done. We've subtracted one sample from another, and the correlated parts have dropped out, uh, which is what we wanted them to do, the reset noise. Uh, let's assume we're going to get rid of this flicker noise, and how are we going to do that? Well, let's assume that we're sampling at a high enough frequency that it doesn't matter. And what do I mean by that? Well, let me scroll back up, because I've already drawn a picture relating to this. So here, here was sample one and sample two. So these are far apart in time. So that, well, far enough apart in time that, let's say that's T alpha that sample one and sample two are not in the same part of this very low frequency oscillation. Well, this is the flicker noise, the one over F noise, the low frequency oscillation. But let's say instead we made our second sample right there. Well, they're, they're very close in time. Um, that would be like time beta or whatever. The, these two are very close in time, this guy and this guy. And so they're pretty much in the same part of the curve for the one over F noise. So they're dominated by thermal noise. Uh, in the first case, for well, let, let me let me note it this way. For let me get a different color. For this one and this one, we would be operating out here on the frequency curve somewhere up here, and for the other two, the other two pairs, for this one and this one, we would be operating somewhere out here where we can ignore flicker noise. Well, let's let's assume that we were operating out here, out at the yellow point. And we scroll back down to our equation. Well, what we can say then is that at that point, the flicker noise component is much less than the thermal noise component. And so this expression basically equals two times, well, let's say approximately equal to two times the thermal noise squared. And that's where it's a little hand wavy how I got rid of that without being very formal about the definition, but hopefully that made some sense. With correlated double sampling, we have got, if as long as our samples are close enough in time, we get rid of not only the reset noise, the KTC noise, but we also get rid of the flicker noise. That's an important part of it. Let's push this discussion a little further, assuming that we're thermally noise dominated. Hopefully I've convinced you that we can be. Let's say we have a signal that we're trying to sample, and this is over time, time. And let's say plus five volts, that's what we've been saying, that's the thing we're trying to see. A and the signal is just kind of bouncing around at plus five volts. Okay, let's say we make one sample here sample one, and we make our second sample here, sample two. And these are close enough in time that it's basically like looking at a zoomed in portion of that curve from up above. So what is, let's draw a dotted line here. It's a little messy, I'll try to make this one cleaner. This is our sample, uh, well, uh, sampling time. And this is uh, one over the sampling frequency. one over the sampling frequency, and hopefully that makes sense to you. What will often happen um, in a correlated double sampling system is you'll just take the value from here and the value from here. And that's a simple way to do it, and that's a not a bad way to do it, but as I mentioned in previous videos, wouldn't it be better if we could take multiple samples through here, and then at time two take multiple samples before the next sample one starts? 
So let's say the time through which we're taking samples within sample one, I'm going to call that delta t. And let's see what happened. Well, and then there would also be a delta t, uh, the same amount of time within sample two before the next sample one prime starts. What would happen if we play around with that delta t? Let's scroll down. Let's say delta t equals one over infinity. So it's just a very small sample. What we might get out of that is for sample one and sample two, what we would get maybe in sample one, we get 5.03 volts, and these are just hand wavy numbers. And in sample two, we get 4.98 volts. So they're pretty close, but not exactly the same thing. If we were to make delta t equal to infinity, like as if we were integrating on a capacitor, rather and averaging all of those readings together, rather than just taking one discrete value, we would get something that's very close to 5.00 volts and very close to 5.00 volts.